Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we are back working on the Folk Wolf Condor, the Mighty Condor by Trumpeter, 148 scale. Got a little bit of glare here because the angle is a little difficult when you're dealing with a box this big. And we'll get it out of the way. And whoa, here we go. As you can see, it's actually starting to look like an aircraft. Now, when last we worked on it we got the the main wing panels on of course the center section on we do not have if I flip it over do not have the outer wing panels on and of course we don't have our tail feathers on so that will be one of the first things we take care of and then there's a lot of cleaning up to do where the wings have come together probably need a little bit of filler I'm looking right down here, and that's a little concerning. I have to do a little work on that. Actually, that's still mobile. So we can probably fix that without having to do a lot of filling. But that's where we are. Still gluing together the big bits before we put the little bits on. Let's get a move on. In this shot, you can see by applying a little bit of glue and squishing it together, I managed to tighten up that seam. It had in fact been glued but I probably let go of it too soon and that's what caused it to separate. I've glued the outer wing panels on. fit was pretty good. Hopefully I'm not making anyone motion sick here. You can see there's a little bit of squish out just outside of the nacelle. A little bit of misalignment on the right wing but when I sand that that should be taken care of this seam really really good and as we look along the back side here mostly it's come together there's a little bit of a gap out here but nobody's gonna be able to see that with the ailerons in place so I try to focus in on this the left outer wing panel went on even better. As you can see, these joints are all pretty good. A little bit of squish out from the glue, but I'd rather have that than some giant seams to fill. And once again, if we look at the back side here, you can see that went together pretty good as well. I'm not too worried about this gap because, of course, we won't see it. One thing about building a plane this large is that when you hang on to the wing tips, the amount of stress that you're putting on the entire model is actually quite a lot. This is quite a large structure as I struggle to get it in the frame. So while waiting for my outer wing panels to set up nice and firm so I can sand and do any filling, I thought I'd put my tail feathers on. And the interesting thing is, is the right hand uh, tailplane it was a really really tight fit I had to actually sand it a bit to get it to slide in place on the right hand side or the left hand side I should say things are a little more floppy although I'm certain that once I actually apply the glue and push it in place it will be a good joint it's just interesting that the the other side was an extremely precise fit and this side is just a little floppy well, both tail planes seem to have wanted to take the same angle. So I'm going to assume that that's correct. It's actually a very slight anhedral, a very slight down angle. But seeing as that's the parts, the way the parts want to go on, and it is symmetrical, I'm going to be, like I said, assuming it's correct. It looks good. So... we can keep it in focus you can see we've got a little bit of putty on the problem areas and as usual the putty always looks worse than it really is um, really these areas should sand up pretty good the only thing is is we're not going to be able to restore some of the rivets just because I won't be able to get at them 
Well, we'll see what this looks like after the sanding is done. I think it's about time we'll put a nose on Rudolph here. It's not going to be red. Looks like this is going to fit pretty good. Which is, which is good. And overall, I have to say, any fit issues really are pretty minor. Certainly to be expected when you consider the size of the parts and the complexity of them coming together. Okay, there we go. One glued on nose. As I said, it seems to go on pretty good. Might put a little bit of white glue there just to close up that, but I'm not going to certainly slather on any filler. Because that would end up wiping out any detail, you see. Now something that I have been putting off, and hopefully the camera will get around to focusing, is this where the gondola, you can see that it separates at the ends. I've got to, first of all, I've got to focus on it. I have to address that. As once again, you can see at the ends of the gondola, there's a separation in the middle. It's tight. So I need to, this is so hard to get on camera. I'm going to need to rub down the middle part of the gondola so that it, it fits on here better and I can eliminate the gaps that are at the front and the back. Once again, as I struggle to get this on, you can see the front of the gondola fits pretty good now and it does into the middle. And then we still have a gap at the back. So we're getting a little closer to getting it to fit properly. So I think I'm pretty much done with my scraping to fit. There's still a little bit of a gap at the back on this side. And on this side, I've managed to tighten up the front and the back. There's a little bit of a gap in the middle. Let's see if I can focus in on that a little bit better. And... I'm debating whether I should keep at it because oftentimes this is one of these things where it doesn't matter how long you work on it, you never get it any better than okay or good. And oftentimes you can find that you've, you get a sweet spot and then it's pretty good. And then you keep on trying to improve it. And next thing you know, it gets worse. There's an adage in model railroading, and I'm sure it's in a lot of other hobbies and crafts and things, in which is, the enemy of good is better. So I think since I've basically managed to go from two large gaps, one at the back, one at the front, to smaller gaps kind of running along, I think I'm going to leave it at this. I think the only way to improve it would be to glue it in place, and then I wouldn't be able to get any of the wiring and the... Uh, and the switch or the battery so now this piece here this kind of corrugated part represents the the kneeling pad or the pad the, the gunners or the observers that reside in the gondola that they would lay on and according to the instructions you actually are supposed to glue them onto the main part of the gondola like this you can see how it comes up against this little uh, mark right here. But however, since we're going to be having this part removable and the glazing is going to be fixed, what we need to do is we need to glue it onto here. And as you can see, this is the rear of the gondola and I've already glued the part inside here. And what I did is I, I held the part inside the main part of the gondola, put a, little bit of, put a little bit of glue on the pad, and then I brought the transparency up to it. And this will actually help us to index this part when we put it on the model. So this will actually help us out. In this shot, you can see I've got the the front of the gondola just kind of sitting here in place and looks like the fit's going to be okay there's going to be a little bit of a step but I don't think it's going to be too bad as I rotate around you can see here is the rear of the gondola just set in place as well so I don't think there's going to be any fit issues 
Though there is quite a bit of work to be done on these two transparencies before we can glue them down. I'll elaborate in a second. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to paint this padding on both parts. Um, I haven't decided exactly what color I'm going to use. Um, probably not going to be a gray color, but at any rate, that's got to be done. And then I will probably hand paint all of the structure that you see here. I'll probably hand paint that the same gray I used for the interior. And I don't think that's going to be too big a problem because there's, there's a nice edge on here. And I'm going to paint it on the outside, but it'll have the effect of looking like the inside is painted. Then there's a little grommet that's going to go in this hole. And that's where we're going to deviate from the instructions because they would have you put the grommet in and then they have you shove the machine gun through. And that's something I always manage to forget. When I've got this kind of situation, I'll put the whole plane together and then I realize I haven't put the machine gun in place. I'm going to put the grommet in place and then I'm going to mount the inside of the machine gun to it. And then after the whole thing's been painted, I'll just glue the barrel in place and hopefully it'll be coming out at a straight line so it won't look like it's a bent machine gun. So those are all the steps I've got to do on this. So I've taken the machine gun off the sprue. And I was starting to clean it up in preparation for painting it, and as you can see here, I was about to hollow out the end, and the end is already hollowed out. How the heck did Trumpeter mold a machine gun with a hollowed out barrel? Is this like the Cadbury secret or something? The caramel secret? I don't know, because it looks like it was a two-piece mold, just like any other sprue, but yet there it is. And I looked at the other two machine guns, and their barrels are hollowed out too. It's actually pretty impressive. So I've done the painting of my framework here. Once again, I said, uh, as I said before, I did it on the outside. And as you can see, it's not an absolute solid coat of paint, but this is not the final coat of paint. There's going to be um, the blue over top of it, and that will make this look a whole lot more solid. I didn't think there's much point in just piling on the paint. But at any rate, as you can see from the inside, it's gray, and the gun has been installed, and I've gone and shorn the, ba the barrel, and I've put the barrel in a safe place. Hopefully I'll remember where it is. And here is the back of the gondola. And once again, I wasn't too worried about any minor thinnesses in the paint because even when I put the the other paint on, it this gray is going to end up being more solid. It's only because you can see the light through it that it's tending to look like that. So these are about ready to glue on. So here's the front of our gondola. I'm ready to glue it in place. And I think my methodology is going to be, I'm going to put glue on this surface here alone. And then I'm going to put it in place and allow it to kind of get tacky. Then I'll remove the gondola. And then I'm going to put a little bit more uh, of my fast uh, quick sitting glue underneath and let it run under via capillary action. I won't want to do that with this in place because obviously that will glue that in place. We don't want that. All right, I had it on and I took it off. Why? Why would I do such a foolish thing you say? Well, once I had it in place, you can see the marks where it was glued on. I realized, my God, I can see inside that transparency so well. I can see that this is bare ass plastic and then that has filler on it. So obviously I'm going to have to paint this upper surface. And I'm assuming I'm going to do the same thing back here. So, not quite as far along as I thought. Paint's not dry yet, but you can see the areas that I... I put the uh, medium gray in there. 
and at least on the front where the glue had already touched left a mark I could go by on the back I hadn't actually glued it in place yet so hopefully I haven't stepped on any of the areas that I actually have to have as a gluing surface but we shall see all right gondola glazing gluing on take two you can see a little bit of shininess around the outside where I used the uh, the flexophile just in the hopes that it would wick in there and as I mentioned there's going to be a, a slight step here but short of basically gluing everything together which I don't want to do not much we can do to avoid that here you can see the rear glazing and it's actually fairly difficult to remove here is the gondola proper and as you can see it just snaps in position really quite solidly I'm quite happy with the way that turned out so it is Saturday afternoon early afternoon it's Canada Day happy Canada Day to everybody and to those viewers in the United States um, on the 4th of July you guys have a happy July 4th and I think I'm going to be wrapping up this episode right now um, got to trim my hedges can't see the front of the house but it's good to be doing videos again after those couple weeks where we were dealing with my dad's health having such a dramatic downturn and his passing away sooner than we expected next episode will hopefully be some more work on the ramp truck so until next time thanks for watching and just keep on modeling